Who's your commander? Good luck. Equipped. Move to combat. Resolves. Right. Now, before you attack Does me. anyone have an answer? Well played. Good game. Hello, Magic fans. Throne of Eldraine is coming out really soon, but I'm not thinking about those commander cards or brawl decks. Just kidding, I totally am. But part of me knows I have to be thinking about my wallet, and that means picking up some cheap commander staples from the rotating sets. If you look at my other video, I already talked about Ixlong block commander staples, but in this video, I'm telling you what cards to buy for your commander decks out of Magic 2019 and Dominaria. First thing I want to do is tell you about my Kickstarter campaign for a cool playmat. It's so cool. Check it out because I know you want to get one. All right. In my top eight list, I do have eight cards, but the first thing I want to do is give a shout out to some reprints because there were some amazing reprints in M19. Two particularly awesome commander cards in Crucible of Worlds and Omniscience. These are staples in our format. They do crazy stuff. Crucible of Worlds allowing a huge recursion engine to take place, coming in at $18, which is not cheap, but it's cheaper than it has been in the past. And then Omniscience, it's a 10 mana enchantment, and it just lets you play stuff for free, that's pretty broken in our format. So if you want these cards, you should probably get them now as they're sitting around in people's trade binders, okay? There's one other shout out that I wanna make, and that is these sets were great for commanders. They were great for legendary creatures. Remember they brought back the original Elder Dragons, the namesake of our format? Arcades and Nicol Bolas gracing M19, so great. And then Dominaria was filled with commanders, some of the most popular commanders ever. And then remember, we even got cool uncommon commanders. So these sets are filled with great cards for our format. But the number eight card, well, it actually has to do with this saturation of legendary creatures. And that's the Legendary Sorcery, Primeval's Glorious Rebirth. Seven CMC for a Legendary Sorcery that's a little bit difficult to cast, but it has you returning all Legendary Permanent cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. This is such a fun mechanic, and we know that Wizards is supporting it. We've seen Kethis the Hidden Hand and Sisse Weatherlight Captain come out after this Dominaria set, and these two really drive home the idea that legendary permanents are going to be a thing. And also, um, do you ever think you're going to stop printing planeswalkers like the face cards of magic? No, Primeval's Glorious Rebirth is going to be amazing all the time. And so if there's ever a planeswalker deck, a super friends deck, a legendary creatures matter deck, it's going to be a great card for them. And coming in at just 25 cents means that it's a budget card as well. Uh, one other thing that I've noticed about a lot of these cards is that they have inflated foil prices, which means that they are definitely attracted by the commander format, by people who want to put a little bit of extra bling in their deck. This is coming in at 275 in foil. That's way more than the 2x multiplier for foil that we normally see. And when we compare it to a card like Rise of the Dark Realms that's in the double digits of cost, yeah, it just makes Primeval's Glorious Rebirth feel like a better deal than it even is. All right, let's talk about another legendary card, and that's Oath of Teferi. 5 CMC, legendary enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, you get to exile a target permanent you control and return it to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. That's fine and all if you can get some advantage out of it, but honestly, it's all about this second paragraph. You may activate the loyalty abilities of planeswalkers you control twice each turn rather than only once. You get to double up on all your planeswalkers. Yes! This is just a five-man enchantment that does what the Chain Veil wants you to do. Okay, let's compare. Chain Veil is a legendary artifact, four to come down, four to activate. There's a downside if you don't have a Planeswalker going on. And yes, I know Chain Veil because it's a tap effect rather than just a static ability. There are ways to abuse it. But Oath of Teferi is just good, and let's compare the price points. 
25 cents. By the way, huge multiplier for a $3 foil, but compare that to the Chain Veil sitting at 1475. Yeah, there's a huge difference in price, and Oath of Teferi in many decks that aren't trying to combo off is just better. Next, we have a piece of equipment that I seem to hear a lot about. Everyone seems to say, oh, if you attach Hemel the Host to this, it'd be really good. Yes, I know, I know it's going to be really good, because getting two of an amazing card is doubly as good. Helm of the Host is 4 mana for a legendary equipment, and at the beginning of combat on your turn, create a token that's a copy of equipped creature, except the token isn't legendary if equipped creature is legendary. That token gains haste. This equip cost is insane though, equip 5. It's 9 mana to get this Helm of the Host going, but in some situations it just wins the game. Anything that has combat-based synergies can just keep creating more and more things. Godo is a good example. Godo will fetch the helm. If you ever get the helm on Godo, it'll just keep giving you extra combat steps, making you more and more Godos. Yeah, it's gross. And it's not the only card that does that. Tons of cards interact with your combat phase and could just go crazy with Helm of the Host. Coming in at 575, the foil multiplier is a little bit more normal. But you know, if I if I have to be honest, this isn't even my favorite equipment in Dominaria. I've I've fallen in love with Black Blade Reforged. It's an amazing equipment, but it can't be on this list because you shouldn't buy the Black Blade Reforged from Dominaria. You should buy the one from Gideon Spellbook. Better art, cheaper, and you can get cool foils for way less money. So yeah, that's. That's why it's not on this list, but Helm of the Host, totally busto. Number five on our list is Goreclaw, Terra of Calcisma. This innocuous 4CMC 4-3 bear is way better than we all think. I honestly think that Goreclaw is an excellent card and it helps push creature strategies that need a little bit of extra help. If you can accelerate your curve by two, and you are going to be playing some big creatures in this format because it's Commander, okay? Accelerating things by two could actually make your creatures more relevant at a stage in the game where you really need them to. But you know, getting bigger creatures earlier doesn't matter if your opponents have these defensive measures. And that's why the pump and the trample becomes a really invaluable keyword on this card. You know, I was also going to throw in Aggressive Mammoth as another kind of, hey, this is something that does something similar. But honestly, it was printed in M20. So sorry, Aggressive Mammoth. You cheated on us with the newest set. Jerk. Okay, but you they're really cheap right now, too. They're like 20 cents. So you should pick one up because six mana, eight, eight, giving everything else trampled that basically helps facilitate sort of big creature strategies and turns your bigger creatures into more damage that can attack through to your opponents. All right, we are halfway through this top eight list and I want to thank TCGplayer.com. All of these cards are in the link in the description, plus a couple more secret cards that you'll have to click on to find out what they are. You should pick them up from TCGplayer.com because they support the Jumbo Commander YouTube channel. And if you use my links, I get some money and I use money to like pay for things and stuff. On to the top four. This is my favorite card of this list. It's Eldest Reborn. Four and a black for this enchantment saga. I loved the sagas. They were so cool, so flavorful, and the art on this is amazing. So the first thing that happens is that each player sacrifices a creature or planeswalker. Solid, but not worth five mana. So let's keep going. Each opponent discards a card. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Now it's a five mana two for one that works really well in multiplayer. This is feeling pretty good. And then finally, the last effect, put target creature or planeswalker card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. Yes, now we've suddenly got the value that we needed. You know, some of these effects from the old days were like two and three mana, and those were very good and broken. And then we've started seeing reanimation effects at five mana and they felt clunky. But I think that the Eldest Reborn does a really good job of riding that line of instant value with a cool reanimation effect. I think this is a great commander card and I don't think I'm alone because non-foil versions of this card are 10 cents 
and foil versions have an insane foil multiplier, $6.50, 65 times more expensive, oh my gosh. But by the way, it looks very good in foil, so you should totally, no, get it for 10 cents and throw it in your deck, it's awesome. By the way, this is the time where I should throw in a disclaimer. Uh, these are great commander pickups. These are not necessarily going to appreciate in value. I don't think that this card is going to suddenly skyrocket and become $5 because Dominaria was opened up like crazy and this is an uncommon. So, I mean, if everything goes right, it might get to 15 cents, okay? So a lot of this advice might be just hey, these are great cards that are cheap right now. You can get them and they can go in your deck. Not necessarily buy a bunch of them, make all the money, become a magic financier. All right, number three is a pretty goofy card that you might've forgotten about. It's Chaos Wand. A three mana artifact and you can activate it for four and you choose an opponent. They exile cards from the top of their library until they exile an instant or sorcery card and you can cast that card without paying its mana cost. Sometimes you hit a counter spell and it feels bad, but that's okay because you can pick whatever opponent you want and you're always gonna hit something fun. Now, to get serious, this card was much better recently. And then, when Paradox Engine was banned, <laughs> together. Uh, it got a little bit worse, but that's okay Okay, because we were also given a gift of Scheming Symmetry. And the reason why I love the gift of Scheming Symmetry is because I have pulled off this eight mana two card combo of, well, I will Scheming Symmetry you, my opponent, and then I will Chaos Wand that spell off the top of your library. I hit an Insanguinate for zero once, but I have also hit an Insurrection and killed the table with uh, Scheming Symmetry and Chaos Wand. So I, I feel like I'm, like I'm doing pretty well here. Okay, let's get to the top two. This is the runner-up, and it's Demon Lord Belzenlock. Okay, I know what you're thinking. This is just a big, dumb beater. It's a 6 CMC, 6 6 Elder Demon, Flying Trample, and when it enters the battlefield, you basically get to exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a non-land card. Then put that card into your hand. If the card's converted mana cost is 4 or greater, repeat the process. Demon Lord Belzenlock deals 1 damage to you for each card put into your hand this way. So some people are looking at Demon Lord Belzenlock and they're like, look, it draws you a card, whatever. Okay. I love that it always draws you a spell. It skips through those lands. That's very good, especially when you're casting something for six mana. But in Commander, it very often draws you two, three, four cards. And it's a six, six flying demon. It comes down early. It's the Black Mole Drifter. Honestly, it's very good and it's very cheap. For a Mythic coming in at 50 cents, I also think people are discounting that 6-6 six, six flying body. It is still big and still smashes people. And my number one card from Dominaria and M19 is Cleansing Nova. Three white white for a sorcery. Destroy all creatures or destroy all artifacts or enchantments. That's it. Five mana board wipe. Wipes the things away you need gone. It's simple. It's straightforward. It's incredibly good. Coming in at 85 cents, this is the kind of card you just want. You need it for your certain decks. It's better than almost all of the other five CMC board wipes. And honestly, in Commander, we don't need the board wipe on four. We don't need Wrath of God. I think that Cleansing Nova gives us the flexibility to have that one extra mana really, really matter. It's just awesome. And you should definitely buy some and put them in Commander decks. All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this top eight list of the cards that you should buy as they're rotating out of standard or steal out of the binder of your standard playing friend. If you like this video, check out the Ixalan block video that I made. It's basically the same, but with Ixalan block because it's also rotating. You can also click on the link in the description to see this whole list plus a few extra cards. I'll have my link to my Kickstarter down there or end my Patreon. By the way, Patreon people, you're amazing. Thank you so much for all your help. And I'm just excited to be making a lot of videos right now. So thank you so much for supporting me in all the ways that you do. 
All right, everyone, I'll see you really soon for more Deck Techs and Commander content. Bye-bye.